Like moths to a flame, you've thrown caution to the wind for a glimpse into our world. Well, now you're in it. Welcome to Aft Up Stories. Everybody and welcome to another episode of Effed Up Stories. I am your host, Will Pender. And I am your co-host, Ryan Sharp. And tonight we have another story from a submission. Um, is actually, again, we, we covered a story not too long ago from a guy named Ryan. Well, here's another one of the stories. And I got two more. Um, they're neat little stories and we do want to cover a lot more uh, submissions. Um mainly because they're really cool. Nobody's actually heard them before. Um, and it's more incentive for you guys to send them in. I mean, that that's really what f Up Stories is about, is your stories. So we're going to cover them a lot more, and we want you to send more in. So if you have an f Up story on the paranormal or whatever, maybe it's pictures, maybe it's video, we would like to get it. So you can send that to us on our official site, which is FDUPStories.com. That's E F F E D U P. S T O R I E S dot com. Go to the menu, uh, submissions, fill out the form, submit. It'll get on the website, and most likely we will cover it in a podcast. So, with that having been said, uh, Ryan, and we're going to refer to him as R from here on out, not to confuse him with our co host, Ryan. Um, he's had a life peppered with paranormal phenomenon, much like. Many of our people uh, who submit their stories, their lives are peppered with it. So, before his story begins, and his story has to do with a dark mass that manifests in his room. Um, but before we, you know, he even starts his story, he makes a point to note that he's never used a Ouija board or anything of that nature. And he says the reason why is that he's grown up with a lot of strange activity, you know, paranormal phenomenon. And he thought to himself, if he's had that many problems already, what on earth would happen if he dabbled in the occult? I mean, that that's his own little uh, his own little snippet there. That's that I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Yeah, and you know, I don't really blame him, although I'm kind of on, on the opposite side of the spectrum in that I I relish in that stuff. I just never seem to have many experiences. But anyway, I digress into his story. So this, if you remember the last story, uh, you know, he mentioned that, uh, I can't remember what age he was. It was after this story took place. um, And, you know, he he had his own room at that point. He had gotten his older brother's room. So this is before that story. And this is back when he, um, so he had an older brother who was in the army. And he had a younger brother. And in this story... Uh, this is before his older brother had left, and he was sharing a room with his younger brother, which was, you know, at the, it was an upstairs at the end of the hall. You know, and, you know, being young, and he admits, you know, he was afraid of the dark. Um, and I guess, you know, just maybe he had an active imagination. But for, for all these different kinds of reasons, uh, he, he, would, he didn't want to go to sleep. You know, he, he pushed it as far as he could. He said his eyelids would be, you know, crashing in on him. He, you know, he, he'd keep them open as long as he could, and he just couldn't resist. So, 
you know, uh, from his own words, uh, sleepwalking actually runs in his family, uh, at least in terms of him and his brother. So, you know, he, usually, I guess, like most people, his sleeping, uh, his sleepwalking would just consist of, <laughs> I found this kind of funny how he said it was, uh, you know, just consist of silly things like, you know, peeing in the sink or walking around. So I don't know how common that is for you sleepwalkers out there, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's um, well. Both myself and my brother slept walk and, and or used to sleep walk, and um, my cousin was a prolific sleepwalker. And peeing in weird places is a <laughs> is a really common one. My brother actually now now he wasn't a common sleepwalker, but I do remember um, when he was really young, he went to my mom's room. He pulled open the, the one of the drawers in the bureau and pissed in it. And uh, it was pretty funny, right? But anyway, so, uh, you know, in this, in this story, R is 14 at the time. And he said that would make his brother 10. So they had twin bunks. And, you know, instead of it being like bunk beds on top of one another, uh, they were separated on opposite sides of the room. Actually sounds like my brother and sister. Anyway, um, he always had to have the room door open. Um, you know, that was just his paranoia, I guess. He had to be able to see out there. And he also had to have his closet door closed. Um, he said he had to do these things because, you know, he would, you know, hear unpleasant sounds or he'd see something strange. And, you know, if the doors weren't in this specific way, that's when, you know, he'd experience this stuff. So, and he, and he does say that up to this point in his life, uh, no one in his family is actually experienced any uh, paranormal phenomenon so i guess this is just so far we can chalk it up to being kids with an overactive imagination so here he is uh he said every night you know he's lying face up you know the covers are so tightly tightly tucked into the sides of his bed um that when he gets up in the morning his bed is usually still made right i mean it's, it's just tucked in so tight and this story took place in winter. He said uh, it happened in Texas, and he said in the winter in Texas, it usually only gets to be as low as about 30. But he had um, two really big heavy blankets, and so he was fine. So anyway, uh, eventually he does fall asleep, but it only lasts for about an hour or two. He wakes up, and he's feeling really strange, and he looks to his right, and he sees this figure standing next to him in the bed. And he puts on the glasses. And, you know, he expects this to be his brother. You know, he expects it to be his brother that had just, like, slept, walked, and, you know, walk in there. And, you know, he was right. It was his brother. Uh, but, you know, he, he wasn't walking around like he usually does when he's sleepwalking. He was just standing next to his bed and he was staring at him for you know I guess what seemed like a long period of time he said his expression was as if he was deep in thought you know he, he was watching him sleep but he was deep in thought and so he spoke to him he, you know he, he tried to tried to wake him up and he said you know he did this for a good five minutes um, but you know he, he just it wasn't getting through you know so he put his hand on his brother's back and, you know, his intention was to direct him back to his bedroom. You know, it was just another sleepwalking incident, you know, something that may have happened a hundred different times. No big deal, right? So he does this, he, he brings his brother back to his room and then he goes back and he makes his bed, you know, and he, he said he makes it with military folds. I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm guessing it's pretty tightly tucked. And he said he, he tucked himself in, you know, in, in a way that it was impossible to undo, right? So he's like tied, tied tightly to his bed. And he tries to fall back asleep, but he can't. He's just lying there and he's looking at the ceiling fan and questioning how long, you know, his brother must have been there staring at him. But it was his only brother, so he wasn't too paranoid. It was just kind of strange, I guess. So anyway, he's still wide awake. You know, all this stuff is running through his head. And he said it felt like it was about a half an hour. And then all of a sudden, both of his heavy covers were pulled from the tucked places 
you know, and he said like his bed was tucked in all the way to his shoulders. And he said it was pulled with extreme force from the foot of the bed, but it wasn't just pulled off of him. He said that both covers, which, and he said, now I don't understand what kind of blankets this is, but he says it must have weighed a good 30 pounds together. He said one was like really thick wool and the other was a hand crocheted blanket. Uh, but he said that they were pulled and they they were basically like, you know where the foot of the bed is? Um, well, he said that they were pulled right down into that little slit. Like they were tucked in between where his mattress and his footboard is. Right? And th- this would have happened in like the, you know, a split second. Like this really forceful just whoop and is, is tucked down in this little slit. And he said he, he sat up, you know, and he was trying to, to, to ignore what this was, you know, trying to ignore the, the possibility that uh, this was something unordinary, we'll say. You know, and he, he gets up and he, um, he looks and, and he finds that the, 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 the blanket was so tightly jammed into this slot that, you know, he, he couldn't even pull the covers out of the space. I mean, it was just so tightly jammed in there. And he said, you know, uh, beside the, uh, the footboard in front of, um, you know, in front of the window, there was, uh, which was right to the side of his footboard or whatever, uh, was this obvious uh, dark mass floating in front of the window, um, not a foot from where he was, you know, trying to pull his covers from. And I just realized something. When I said earlier he was directing his brother to his bedroom, I meant to his bed. That's right. They were in the same room. Anyway, um, so he pulls this blanket and it's so tightly jammed in there that he can't pull it out. And as he looks next to the footboard of his bed, there floating, you know, it, next to the window is this really, really obvious dark mass. Okay. And it, it was so obvious to him because he almost couldn't see through it. I mean, it had a transparent quality to it, but it was like a, a, I guess like a black cloud, like a really a thick black cloud. And he said he was, he was so terrified at this point because he felt that whatever this was, it, I guess it had to have been intelligent. He, he felt that it, that's how he put it in quotes, it wanted him to know that it was the cause of his covers being so tightly tucked in between in between the mattress and the footboard. So this was the thing that pulled the blankets off of him. He said it was almost as if it was trying to tell him that, uh, you know, he wasn't in control of his room. This thing was. And he said, you know, he stared at this uh, dark mass with his glasses on for, you know, a good couple of minutes, you know. And he said he was too scared to scream. He was, uh, you know, really helpless. And he said, you know, he, he continued to stare at this thing for, you know, at least at least four or five minutes, and it eventually it went away. And you know, he goes on. I that was the main part of the story. But he says, you know, while his um, family, uh, him and his family, were watching TV downstairs, not a month before like this all took place. Um, you know, he had also looked to the right of a staircase and watched for several seconds, as what he described as a very tall man looking very much like Abe Lincoln walked from his, you know, his back door up to the staircase, you know, one step at a time. And he said he was wearing a, a dark press suit. Must have been, you know, he assumed it to be uh, tailored in the 18th century. And he said he wore a tall black hat. You know, he's very thin. He didn't look like a ghost to him. He, he said it looked like a real person. He just watched this, this real person that looked, very similar to Abe Lincoln, walk up his stairs. You know, he said it was full-figured, solid. Um, you know, and and so like that. That's just another incident that he saw. So I I really don't think that that's uh, directly related. But I guess it just goes to reinforce, you know, his admission that he's had many strange things happen to him. So I mean, discussing the, um, you know, I guess the 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 elephant in the room. Uh, the, the black mass, right? The black mass that uh, pulled his sheets off of him. So the first thing I thought when I read this story is I thought about how people's, um, you know, if, if you have a really strong emotional uh, 
strong emotions, negative in particular, it's been said that uh, you can manifest these uh, thought forms. You can manifest uh, these... Um, you know, you can manifest poltergeist. You can manifest uh, uh, dark. Well, you manifest poltergeist-like activity. That's right. Yeah. Like it's it's like the you know just a, a a random lashing out of psychic energy. Now, didn't David Weatherly when we had him on our show? I remember he was um he was writing a book on tulpas. Yeah. And what didn't that have to do with um. Well, tulpas, um, they are thought forms. I think it's um, I think it's a part of a Buddhist, maybe, Buddhist oh. belief system uh, where, the, where the word tulpas <clears throat> come from. Um, you know, in, in North American society, I, I guess, or in North American mythology, um, that kind of thing we refer to as a, as a thought form. And I think it's a... You know, that's a relatively recent term. So, tulpas, um, you know, it's like saying uh, Bigfoot and, and Yeti. You know, uh, it's the same thing, just that's the regionally specific names. One's brown and one's white, reflect its environment. Yeah. Um, tulpas, thought forms, you know, again, they're just, they're, they're one and the same. Um, I think a, a major difference with tulpas, um, I, I do believe, I mean, I could be wrong here, is I think that there's generally a, a specific attempt made to, to create one. Okay. You know, it, it's, a, it's, it, it's purposeful. It's a, it's a premeditated act where thought forms, not necessarily always, but they, you know, what we refer to as thought forms in North America – tend to be um, accidentally created. Um, I know there was an experiment that was done. Now, geez, this was a while back. I can't remember the, the name of the experiment, but it was a group of people engineered a story, um, a completely fictional tale um, about a woman who experienced some trauma and commit suicide. And together they were able to contact this thought form that they had created in this group using the same kinds of divination tools like seances and crystal balls and cards and Ouija boards. I think specifically they use Ouija board. Um, and they were able to contact this completely fictional ghost that they had made up in this very focused, very detailed story. And that together they had, you know, they were they were illustrating a, a a theory, a specific theory that they had, and they were experimenting towards that. But I think that very clearly illustrates a a you know uh, how a group can create a thought form. Well, it does seem like um, you know, and and I've ironically been emailed um, at least by two or three different people in the last uh, month. Uh, speaking about the, uh, you know, th your frame of mind, right? Like the things that you think about, your attitude, your, you know, if, you, if you're pissed off all the time, it seems like bad things keep happening to you, right? Like you, you kind of go in this downward spiral. And just by, uh, you know, your frame of mind and the way you think you attract either negative energy or positive energy. And, you know, honestly, in my own experience, I found this to be true, right? Like if you're having a, a particularly bad week, you know, you have a really bad day at work, um, or maybe you're, you're kind of depressed right now in, in this point of time in your life, it seems like uh, just more bad luck seems to follow you. More things don't go your way. And it just keeps, uh, you know, spiraling and getting more out of control. And in, in you know, uh, the opposite of that is also true. If you've had a particularly good couple days, you know, and, and things just keep uh, tending to uh, line up your way. I mean, I even find that to be true if you're playing cards with people. You know, you're on a winning streak and you're in a good mood because you're winning. Right, and you might lose a game or two, but as long as you keep that 
uh, positivity. You know, you're having a good time. You're genuinely happy and you're winning. It's like it, it keeps coming back and you, you end up, you know, for the most part, having this big winning streak. Um, so, I mean, I, I've been emailed about this specifically. Uh, you know, we've been getting a lot of emails from people in the past uh, couple months when we took a break from our show. And, uh, you know, a lot of, everybody kind of knows that uh, trolling was why we took a break. And uh, <clears throat> so a lot of people were um, basically saying that, you know, uh, fuck the trolls. You know, a lot of people appreciate us and they, they like what we do and they're appreciative. And I have to say to you guys who, who have email, I mean, there's been quite a few of you. You guys are awesome. Um, I really have ha had a, a really renewed... Um, outlook and perspective and just uh, you know for all for all the negative stuff we've had um, you know that we've got a lot of really truly amazing fans out there and you guys are why we do this and it, it's why we're going to continue to do it um, but anyway uh, the point being that a lot of people touched on that very subject you know like I, I guess they could tell we were burnt out I mean you and I both said Ryan we were Burnt out. I mean, we, we went the extra mile. We did lots of extra shows. Well, I think that's exactly what it was, is that we were pre-recording a lot of material. We were dealing a lot, dealing with a lot in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and, you know, everything all together. The trolling, you know, of course, being a... But it, it, it certainly did seem to create a, 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 a specific atmosphere, didn't it? You it, know, I it mean, did. Like, it, it you know, and... I mean, something that uh, I try to say, like, you know, some pe some people know, but you and I, both of us have uh, very busy jobs, and in particular, we're, you know, we're both short-staffed. We're both uh, picking up a lot of slack, working longer hours and stuff, so it's, it's actually hard to find time to do the show, right? And then when we, when we actually get some time to do it, um, you know, we're, we're so uh, exhausted from that week's week of work. I mean, so I've been working six day, six day weeks sometimes here. And so you're so exhausted. It's like, even if you do have a couple hours after you get your, your grocery shopping and stuff done, you don't necessarily want to go and do a book report. Right. I mean, I love this stuff, but it, it's hard to find time. So, you know, a lot of people were concerned about stuff like that. And they, they were just telling us that they appreciate us. And I, and I love you guys for that. But again, one of the, the things that kept popping up was, you know, people, I guess, who are really in tune to this, they're knowledgeable on it, and they know, is that when you're focused on certain things, um, if you're focused on the negativity and stuff like that, you can really impact what you draw into your life. And, I mean, Ryan, if you want to look at, and I, and I hate to, uh, to bring up an old eyesore, but, uh, you know, and we mentioned this in our Demonic Possession episode, but we were, oh. <laughs> you know, we had a guy that we were friends with that shit really went in a sour way, and we both directed a lot of negative energy towards him, and he fell apart, right? We know that. he A lot of things just really dramatically fell apart, and that would be one thing. You, you could chalk it up to coincidence, but... I've found that to be true for several people who have, uh, you know, uh, for lack of better words, affected me in a, in a negative way. Anyone who, who's drawn my ire, um, I don't have to do, you know, I don't do spells, I don't do shit like that. I just, all I have to do is really focus and concentrate, and I don't even try it. It's just, you know, it's intuitive. It's just what you do when you're mad at somebody. And some of those people who really drew it from me have had a lot of uh, really dramatic, like life-changing bad stuff happen to them. And sometimes when I think about that, and I, and I think about just the way nature works, because we do know that there is truth to the, uh, you know, your thought projection. Okay, I mean that's how we think miracles work. You know, it's not a, a, a miracle of God necessarily. When, you know, somebody's saved from a terminal illness because a, a clergy prayed and God granted it. It was granted because they might have had 
a couple hundred people praying and focusing on that person getting better. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, and and you know, there have been very specific studies that that you know prove that double blind studies that, and it didn't matter who they were praying to. They even got a bunch of uh, agnostics and and uh, and um, you know straight disbelievers in any kind of divine anything, and they you know. Um, Performed this double blind study at with uh, a bunch of fertility clinics, and sh and they proved you know these huge uh, um, upticks and in, in their results that it certainly did look like that the praying was working you know and I think you bring up a, a good point when you say you know you don't do spells well I mean the ritual that's involved in in what is classically known as a spell. With all the tools and sometimes even the ingredients, it's I, I, in my personal opinion and experience, it's it's actually meant to um, create a atmosphere, and that atmosphere is what helps focus focus your personal will on the matter, right? And you know, it's that very specific focusing of your of your own you know, strength, you know, depending on your own personal strength of will, sometimes, you know, the, uh, the same kinds of things that uh, an individual can do, um, you know, a, a group can do as well. And I, I think that's what we get when it's, you know, pray for a miracle and something amazing happens. If you're able to get large groups of people aligning their, collective wills towards a um a specific goal and you know i i i think anybody should be able to absorb that you know it, do, it doesn't seem like that um ridiculous of a concept that well see the I, power of the mind you know i think you're exactly right and and that's what i think so i mean would it be fair then to say that um you know the the, the whole okay Somebody pisses you off, you get angry. Naturally, I mean, it's just natural. So you, you know, even subconsciously, you direct that negativity towards that person, and maybe some bad stuff happens to that person as a cause of that. And is that not nature's balanced way of, you know, evening things out? Right? I mean, does that make sense? Is that nature's way of, like, you know, you were a dick, you did something bad to somebody... And now they're pissed off at you, and just them being pissed off at you, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, justifies, you know, it, it gets justice on you in some way or another. Well, it's all it's all energy, you know. We look in in any kind of the sciences, whether it's material science or thermodynamics or uh, chemistry, biology, we have all these different systems, uh, whether it's chemical or biological or geological um, or, or just general physics. Um, all these energy systems find ways to balance energy. Um, the discharge of electricity, you know, water flowing from a high point to a low point, um, you know, this is this is how our universe is laid out. And when you put energy into um, some sort of aggressive attack or or something on somebody, well, I mean that energy doesn't, it just, you know, it just doesn't go out and and dissipate into nothing. You know, it it, it like every other system, it it moves on, it it, it travels, it goes through processes. Um, and I think, you know, as, as far as nature is concerned, you know, people people may not be able to kind of get their head around the idea of nature, but it's, think of it more of a natural system. You know, it, it, it just, that, that's the way our universe is set up. You know, energy flows around. You you reap what you sow sometimes. Uh, you know what? That is a, is a good way to summarize it. So, um, you know, I guess if you're having a, a, a really, and a, I notice this for myself, right? Like, you can tell me, Ryan, if, if this is true for you, but when you're having a string of bad shit happen, it seems like it just continues and continues and continues. And just like when you're having, um, you know, a string of good things happen, it continues. And I think in some ways our attitudes and 
just the way we feel has a big part in you know uh, the momentum of what's happening. Well, yeah, I find I take I take the wind out of that kind of uh, constant negative feedback just by you know you just kind of like all right, fuck it, I I accept what's happening and I'm you know I'm I'm just going to deal with it and move on and you know the more I'm able to do that, the more it seems uh, I'm able, you know, you get yourself out of the funk as it were. Yeah. Like you almost have to, you almost have to turn the other cheek or, or decide to do something positive with it. Like, you know, I'm going to take all of this anger and frustration and use it as a fuel to do something good with it. You know, I'm going to use it to motivate me to do something, um, you know, difficult or, or whatever. You're going to use it as a fuel. So, I mean, uh, I guess trying to wrap this back into how it relates into our, how, how his story was with the thought form, um, you know, it, it's been said that your, you know, your attitudes and your, you know, even if you're not aware of it, right? I mean, a lot of uh, poltergeist-like activity actually comes from pre-bu- pre-bu- fuck, I can't even pronounce the word. Prepubescent. Now teenagers especially females right because they're uh, especially hormonal i think i think more specifically um a lot of it is found in houses where um kids are going through pu- puberty yes uh they're entering you know that that kind of mental turmoil and i guess biochemical turmoil that takes place for people at that age so in in our story you know he's 14 uh, and you got his little brother. He's 11. So, I mean, both of these kids are really um, around that age. I mean, depending on when you hit that uh, that stage in your life. So, you got both of these kids. I mean, you got, um, you know, just the anxiety of, of, I mean, for R, I guess he'd be going, he'd be like one year in junior high. You'd have the other kid, um, you know, about to start junior high you got the the trials of of school life and and other kids and whoever knows what else could have been in their home life and in their neighborhood and stuff all compounded by puberty and just by reading our stories i mean you know he's heard some strange stuff seen some strange stuff i mean he was a spooked little kid i mean he you know he kept the lights on had to have the doors a certain way um so, I mean, is it possible that, uh, you know, these emotions and, and stuff like that could have manifested this cloud of darkness, right? This, and, and in fact, I mean, some of, uh, I mean, perhaps a lot of the experiences that he had as a kid, um, you know, I mean, I got four stories from him here now. We've covered one already. Um, I mean, maybe a lot of this stuff could be directly tied to, uh, you know, his thought forms. I mean, is that possible? Well, I certainly think there's a possibility. Um, also, you know, it, 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 it could very well be that it's a, 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 how do they say, a confluence of events or we, you know, you have an area that is prone to, um, you know, whether it's electromagnetic or maybe something a little more exotic that we don't quite understand, you know, a, a thinner area of the dimension, perhaps the barriers are, are a little lower there, um, mixed with a, a, you know, a strong willed young man, um, you know, trying to digest the conflict in himself, becoming, you know, going from child to, to adult, you know, it creates a lot of heavy duty emotion. And like you said, we don't know what his home life was um, at this point, but I think it's safe to say that anybody 14 years old is uh, <laughs> going through some stuff. Oh, hell yeah. You know, um, so I think it's definitely very possible that it was, you know, uh, either a series of thought forms or a series of thought forms accompanied by something else. Well, do you know what I think it is? I mean, and I'm just giving an opinion. I really don't have uh, any factual anything to this. But, as is the case of, of, of what I was saying before, but how you, you know, how you um, react to certain things and your attitudes and, and stuff like that can more or less put you in a, 
downward spiral or just draw in more of the same kind of energy or, or you know what I mean, the same kind of events. I think in in R's case, um, he's probably had a, a couple, you know, um, strange experiences. I mean, he did say he saw and heard some stuff. He was probably in tune to it from that. He was open to it, you know, even at a young age. And as he experienced small things and he thought about it, he opened the possibility for more of it to happen. You know, much like your attitude can draw in, you know, you, you know, if you're negative, you're going to draw in negative things. Well, if you're really, uh, you know, you're open to the idea of the paranormal and you're thinking about it and you're worried about it and you're scared about it, you're open to it, you believe in it, and now you're drawn in more of it because... You know, you, you've opened your eyes to that world. You're thinking about it. You're, you're directing that energy to you. So I think in, in our case, I mean, let's just say, for example, everything paranormal, let's, let's assume that it, it's all a real thing. You know, you know he, he would have drawn more of it to himself because the little stuff that he did see and he did believe... Uh, open his mind to the possibility even more so. Now he could see more of it. Now he drew more of it. So I think in, in our case, maybe at a young age, uh, he opened that doorway and he, you know, he, he, he fed it. You know, he, he, even if it was by an accident, his own un, you know, subconscious mind, his own belief systems allowed it to be. And he drew it to himself. So... Uh, that's that's what I think uh, happened in his case, and um, you know what are your thoughts? You know, audience out there, if you want to uh, give us your thoughts. I mean, ha if you have any experiences with that stuff, I'd be interested to hear it. And of course, um, if you have any of your own effed up stories um, on the paranormal or whatever, you can certainly send that to us as well. It'll get on the website and most likely into one of these podcasts so you can submit that to um, us at our official website that's effedupstories.com e-f-f-e-d-u-p-s-t-o-r-i-e-s.com and I hope you enjoyed the story and we do have more coming um, we will be covering the Giants very shortly and with that said uh, Ryan do you have anything to add? Uh, no just Again, thank you very much for the continued support um, of all of our listeners out there. Um, we really appreciate the nice comments. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's really great to have people who are so interested in, in the material that we cover. Um, thank you for listening. Oh, and a quick note, just, just because I forgot to mention it. Um, for anybody who has uh, uh, commented on YouTube, I, I did disable the comments, uh, it, but it only seems to apply to our newer videos because of the trolling. Um, so if you don't see my reply to your comments, um, it, it, I, honestly, I'm ignoring them just because I don't want to go in and see the, the trolling things either. I know we got a lot of great fans out there, but uh, the, the more popular our stuff gets, unfortunately, the more trolls uh, that come in there. And the only way for me to keep my sanity and and, and kind of keep this thing going is to just ignore that. So if, if you really have something important that you want to discuss with me, um, d do it through our website. You know, there, there's contact information on there. There's forums and stuff that you can do it through there. And that way, hopefully, you know, we, we can both have our cake and eat it too. Uh, but with that said, uh, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time.